www.bluebloodcommunications.com. You are watching Blue Ridge Communications TV 13, now available in HD on channel 613. Welcome to Computer Wise. George Roberts with you and a great show for you tonight. We're going to be talking about NEPA BlogCon. If you're wondering what this is all about, it's Northeast Pennsylvania's blog conference happening in a couple weeks. And uh, joining us on the program, we'll have Carla Porter and Michelle Davies from NEPA BlogCon joining us to talk about that. So that's a little bit later on in the program. Some exciting things happening in the world of com computers tonight. So we want to bring you up to date on things in the news. We'll be checking in with that in a little bit. But right now, we want to talk about how to protect your PC against devious security traps. Uh, they're out there and they're causing all kinds of problems for our viewers and we get email every week from people with problems uh, because they have uh, fallen to some of these uh, these things that are happening out there trying to, to get into your computer, trying to get your information. And folks over at uh, PCWorld.com have come up with a pretty cool uh, uh, article on this, on protecting your, your computer. So let's talk about some of these ways that you can secure your PC against malicious wilds of the web. Let's talk about phishing first. It's, uh, phishing is uh, one of those devious attacks that you're most likely to encounter during a day-to-day -day, uh, use of your computer. Phishing websites mimic the look of another site in an attempt to lure you into entering your personal and account information, like we see this one here, purporting to look like Facebook, where they want your cell phone number, your email address, you know, and then it goes on from there. Mistyped website URLs usually are another way of uh, how you get to some of these sites, like in, instead of typing out Facebook, maybe you, you typed really fast, you got facebock.com or something like that. Um, and then the other thing is the email messages that pretend to be from legitimate sources. Those, are, of course, are another thing that you have to uh, worry about. Now, a simple thing that gives away some of these phishing sites is that the URL doesn't match the URL of the website that you think it is. So the website you're going to, or maybe there's a link that you're going to click on in the email, if you hover over the link, you will see that uh, it might not be the actual URL that you thought you were going to. So you want to check those very, very closely. A close examination of the URL of any website before you give out uh, your password. Beyond that, most social media and banking websites use HTTPS encryption by default. So like if you're going to Facebook or something, you'd, you'd look up, up top here and see in the upper left where it says HTTP. If you were on Facebook or Twitter, this would be HTTPS, knowing that you're actually at a secure, a secure website. And uh, the three big browsers, Internet Explorer, Chrome, and Firefox, all include safe browsing warning systems that clue you into suspected phishing and malware sites. Next, let's talk about malicious email. Of course, scammers and hackers love email, and all too often, tales of hacked Twitter accounts and web servers can be traced back to the same origin. A member of your team or somebody in your, in your family has opened a malicious mail attachment. Uh, this is what you have to be careful of. If you click a malicious link or open tainted email, like an attachment that's there, that could open up some sort of a bad program running on your computer. Solution is to be wary of clicked, uh, clicking email links and don't open attachments without ensuring that they're clean. Now, many of the premium antivirus tools automatically scan email attachments for malware but you still want to download attachments and scan them manually before opening them just to be safe. Let's also talk about fake update or warning, uh, error warnings that you might get, like this one here. Adware, the annoying form of malware, 
inundates you with a flood of ads or scary messages that promise to disappear if you pay a fee. Now, what you want to do is, is be, care, be careful of those. Here's another one here that's claiming that your version of Chrome is outdated, could be vulnerable to attacks, and it wants you to accept and install. This is where you can run into a lot of problems. These sites add pop-up boxes or disguised as permission requests to update your browser or claim you need to download the latest version of the software to run a feature on the page. Clicking any button, often even the decline button, will give the attacker authority to run code on your machine. Now, here's how you can get around this. If a website prompts you to update your software, manually surf to the, that software's website and look for updates there rather than clicking the update pop-up, like this one here, which says accept and install. Other thing you want to watch out for is the drive-by downloads. Now, these are exploiting vulnerabilities in software, and the key here is making sure that the software you have on your computer is up to date. Not only do you want to keep your security and your antivirus software up to date on your machine, just as important, though, make sure Windows is being updated. And you can also use a program called uh, Secunia PSI to automatically update or to check for updates for your programs. Now, we've talked about this on ComputerWise before, and if you go to our ComputerWise website and we go to Mention on Other Shows, you will see that we have a link to Secunia right here. Click on this. This program will help you uh, keep track of updates on your computer for many of the programs that you now run. So those are some of the things that you, you want to be sure uh, that you're uh, being careful of when you're out on the internet and also making sure that you are updated uh, with your programs, Windows, and your antivirus. So those are some of the things that uh, we thought we'd talk about today on the program, help you make sure that you're safe when you're surfing and opening up email. Time now for CyberBeat. Well, Apple has released the latest version of its mobile operating system, iOS 7, launched today for owners of recent iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch models. That comes ahead of the release of two new iPhones on Friday. Meanwhile, Apple has released an update to its Mac operating system called 10.8.5, but some have reported problems with screensavers, mail, and Wi-Fi networking speeds. Now, if you're having problems, Apple suggests reinstalling the update. Microsoft has released a crucial update for Internet Explorer that you should apply immediately. It takes care of a new flaw that has been, targeting, has been targeted by attacks. The fix-it solution is only for 32-bit versions of IE. Retail copies of Windows 8.1 will be available in standalone full versions rather than as an upgrade. However, pricing of 8.1 will match that of Windows 8, $120 for regular and $200 for the Pro Edition. But users will have the opportunity to get an actual DVD instead of a digital download. Microsoft is trying to get Apple iPad users to switch to a Windows tablet. They're offering $200 in gift cards for the trade-in trade of an iPad. Now, you have until October 27th to bring in your gently used iPad to a Microsoft retail store. Google has purchased the Bump app to share content with a tap. The smartphone app makes it easy to exchange files, photos, videos, and contacts with a bump between two phones. Sources say that they paid between $30 and $60 million for that app. In recognition of Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, Facebook is promoting an infographic to remind members that help is just a click away. The company has partnered with 33 suicide prevention organizations around the globe. Meanwhile, according to the Washington Post, Twitter and Facebook are available once again in Iran. The two social networks have been in the, in that, uh, been in the dark, that is, in that country since 2009. The reappearance of the two services were not officially announced anywhere. And the long-awaited HDMI 2.0 standard has arrived with more 4K support and higher frame rate potential. And it looks like you won't have to buy new cables. HDMI 2.0 increases the size of the pipe transmitting data from the source to the display. 
It's not known if current HDMI 1.4 products can be upgraded via a simple downloaded firmware update. And there's an updated app that lets your friends know when you're running late. Uber has added the ability to share your location with your friends when you take a ride from an on-demand car service so they can estimate your time of arrival. Uber is a transportation app for select cities. And that's CyberBeat. ComputerWise returns in a moment. You saw a great heavyweight fight. There's one going on in Slatington. Wrenchler versus Wrenchler. Silverado versus Ram. All month long, Wrenchler Chevrolet and Wrenchler Dodge will be discounting trucks, offering crazy rebates and giving insane trade-in. Wrenchler versus Wrenchler. Ram versus Silverado. Don't wait. With these prices, you're the winner. The battle is on. Two great trucks. Two great dealerships. One great name. Wrenchler's. When it comes to something as important as your health, it's good to know there is an expert right around the corner with answers to your questions. We have been serving the Northern Lehigh area with the same dedicated service to our community and your health for over 50 years. Keep your allergies in check this season at Bechtel's Pharmacy. Bechtel's Pharmacy, let our family take care of your family. pretty special. After all, it plays a big role in your life. So when you're looking for a car, you want to be in the best of hands. Kovach has had a hand in serving our community since 1946. At Kovach, you get not only the car, but the care. From no pressure sales to service to our state-of-the-art collision center, we treat you as part of our family. Your grandparents grew up with Kovach, and we're here for you, too. Welcome back to ComputerWise. George Roberts with you. Right now, we're going to check out email, see what you sent in this week, and what we can help you out with. And the first one comes from Raymond. Raymond says, I'd like to, your help on this question. I am running Chrome in admin account, which I use more frequently, and IE10 in a user account. I've heard it's not a good idea to be on the net from the admin account for security reasons. I would like to run both browsers in the same user account and neither to be the default browser. How can I do this? Let me say that your show provides an invaluable service to those of us who cannot move as quickly as the technology changes. Thanks, Raymond. All right, Raymond, first of all, let's talk about some of your, your questions here. Um, I don't think that neither can be the default. I, I believe one of the browsers has to be a default. Uh, that's because there are files that need to be associated with something. Um, you know, when you're talking about like HTML files or JPEG files, things like that, different files for the internet. Um, so I believe that uh, you have to have one of those as a default. Now it is true, we do talk about this from time to time, that you don't want to use your admin account uh, and be surfing the internet or checking email, things like that. You should set up another account and don't give it administrative rights and use that account to uh, surf the internet. Um, uh, that'll just cut down on problems, people getting into your computer, and if you're running the admin account, being able to just access anything that they want to on your PC. Um, you also asked about opening your, uh, what was it here, you, your user account, wanted to be able to share, what do we have it here? Uh, you want to keep all your favorites and your bookmarks, that you're using your admin account, you want to use it in the user account. Well, um, the easiest way to do that, of course, Raymond, uh, is to just 
export them, put them on a flash drive, and then of course you could go to the user account and import them that way, or uh, use a shared folder on your uh, PC that you can reach from your user account. Uh, that would be another way to transfer those, those bookmarks. I hope that helps, Raymond. Next one is from Tony, longtime fan of the show. I was on the internet when my display screen froze with a message from the Department for the Fight Against Cyber Activity, locking me out of any changes to my computer unless I pay a fine of $300 through Money Pack to unlock my computer. I used McAfee. They told me they could get rid of the virus if I paid them $89. My local fix em up shop told me they can't get rid of the problem for 10 to 14 days. Help me, is there something I can do without emptying the bank account, Tony? All right, Tony, first of all, a simple search on the internet is going to get you the information that you need. All you got to do is search for the department uh, for the fight against cyber activity. And here you will find a lot of articles about this particular department, which is, you know, this is uh, again a scam and not true. And you can find websites, you can find articles here about the removal guide, of how to go about unlocking. This is probably the screen that you received, and it says your computer's been blocked and you can't do anything else with it. And uh, don't pay them any money. That's not what you want to do. But you can go through detailed removal guide step by step. This is not entirely the easiest thing to do, but it's not the most difficult to do either. And there are several different um, websites uh, and uh, forums that you can go to. So you can take your pick, see what seem reasonable, see if they are something that you feel that you can actually do, um, and give it a try. If you're having problems, really your fix em up shop is the next place to go to uh, if you cannot uh, get rid of this yourself. Hope that helps out, Tony. Next is from Scott. Scott says, uh, George, thought you should know if any viewers use ESET Online Scanner, that's the external uh, antivirus program that we talk about, they must remove, remove it at the end of the scan. If not, it will cause errors and more problems that they won't understand. And uh, he enclosed a screenshot of the errors that ESET causes if left installed. Thanks, Scott. Well, Scott, I've never seen the error that you showed me before. I've used ESET on different programs, the online scanner. And we're talking about this online scanner here. On our website, we have web protection. And you go to our web protection page, we have antivirus software external. We have several of them here. One is the ESET online scanner. And essentially, this doesn't install very much of anything on your computer. It works mostly from the inside out, looking from... I'm sorry, from the outside in, looking from the outside into your computer and checking on things that way. So it really doesn't install much in your computer to run. But Scott's saying if you're running into errors, you should uh, remove that at the end of the scan. Well, thanks, Scott, for that information. Next one's from Jim. Jim says, uh, when Microsoft discontinues support for Windows XP, will I then need to put Windows 7 or 8 on my netbook? I understand someone asked a similar question, which we discussed on ComputerWise, but I didn't catch the whole conversation. Could you please elaborate this to me, Jim? All right, Jim, what's going to happen, is, and that is in March of next year, 2014, Microsoft is going to stop supporting WinXP, uh, which means that all security and operating system updates are going to cease. This means that your computer now becomes more prone to hackers and viruses uh, because there's not going to be uh, any updates for your operating system, uh, which means when new things come along, new viruses and new ways to attack Windows XP, uh, they're going to be able to exploit vulnerabilities in your operating system and possibly get into your computer and cause problems. Um, you are going to have to also, um, the other problem that's going to cause is that you know, the other software you have on your program, or your computer that is, that software and programs, uh, those companies are going to stop making updates for Windows XP also. They're not going to be concentrating on Windows XP updates anymore. So programs that you have that need to be updated are also not going to be updated, leaving you just open to more vulnerabilities. So you're, you're then going to have to look at Windows 7 or 8 for your computer. Now the catch here is, can your computer accept and use Windows 7 or 8? You can go on the internet, go to Microsoft, and find compatibility guide 
to make sure that your particular computer that you have will use will be able to accept Windows 7 or 8 and use it. Uh, there is the possibility that you might not be able to and if that's the case then you're gonna have to look at a new computer. I hate to tell you that but if you continue to use that netbook you're just leaving yourself open for a whole lot of problems. And that's gonna happen in March of 2014 so you might want to prepare for that. All right, last one comes from Roy. Uh, Roy says that, um, let's see here. Where's his original question? Oh, here it is. Roy, 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 Roy. What, running Windows XP, Windows 7. Uh, and have a problem with my Windows Media Player in Windows 7. I noticed last week that some songs are not playing and I'm receiving an error 404 page can't be found try to correct it still can't uh, find a solution for the repair the music plays fine in XP on the XP machine but not on the Windows 7 machine so uh, long story short said to Roy hey Roy when exactly did you get these and where did you get these songs from that are not playing because some songs are playing not all the songs are playing and it turns out that he purchased these from Walmart. And if you remember a ways back, Walmart was selling songs and they were using um, DMR, a DRM, Digital Rights Management, so that you just couldn't take these songs and make copies of them and give them to other people. You were able to use them on the machine that you downloaded, you know, that you had downloaded this Walmart uh, downloader that you needed to be able to get your songs into your into your computer and then play them. So, uh, like many people that have gotten these songs, I ran into the same thing. Hey, I couldn't play these songs, you know, in later versions when I when I when that computer was no no longer being used and I moved everything to another computer and I wanted to be able to use these songs. I'm running into a problem. They're not playing. They're not playing. What can I do? Well, believe it or not, there is now a legal way to remove the DRM. Uh, there are DRM removal programs and you can go to the internet and look for uh, DRM you can find out more about DRM here but also DRM and it's not converter what we want is a removal like a removal removal software and there are programs out there you can get um, one is uh, drm-removal.com that's one place you can go to these are free and they're legal and you can get one and remove that uh, from the, the copyrighted material that you aren't able to any, able to play anymore so you can check that out on the internet uh, it's the media user rights what we used to talk about years ago um, and you can work around that now and start using those songs once again. Don't forget, if you have any problems, questions, comments, you can write to us here at ComputerWise. Just go to our website, ComputerWiseTV.com, and that's where you'll find my picture and the email address is there. Send us your question. We'll try to help you out right here on ComputerWise. You can also go to our website where we have access to the ComputerWise Fan Forum, right on the main page. And uh, if you can't wait for an answer, go right there. We've got some gurus waiting to help you out. Coming up a little bit later on the program, not too long from now, we've got Michelle Davies and Carla Porter from NEPA BlogCon. We talk about their upcoming conference happening here in Northeast Pennsylvania in a few weeks. We'll be right back with more. Stay with us. furniture should be a reflection of you, your personal style and view of the world. For more than 50 years, Hager Furniture has provided the area with quality furniture at honest prices. We always strive to carry one of the largest selections of American-made furniture with pieces you can customize for any room in your home. Over the years, our goal has remained the same, to completely satisfy each and every customer that walks in our door with impeccable service and respect. Hager Furniture in Palmerton. Quality for life. View our selection online at HagerFurniture.com.
We got your back, kid. My parents always told me that growing up. They never wanted us to worry about things. Always supportive, always telling stories. Now I want them to be in good hands. At Renee's Personal Care Home, Mom and Dad, along with their new friends, are looked after with love and respect in a vibrant country setting. They still have home-cooked meals, exercise, independence, and new stories to tell. Thank you, Renee's, for having Mom and Dad's back. Renee's Personal Care Home in Palmerton. Give us a call today or visit renee'spersonalcarehome.com. You learn early on that your ride is pretty special. After all, it plays a big role in your life. So when you're looking for a car, you want to be in the best of hands. Kovach has had a hand in serving our community since 1946. At Kovach, you get not only the car, but the care. From no-pressure sales to service to our state-of-the-art collision center, we treat you as part of our family. Your grandparents grew up with Kovach, and we're here for you, too. Here on Computer Wise, George Roberts with you. And check out a couple websites now. This one comes from one of our viewers who says, you know, when you need help deciding on what to buy or what's best to buy in certain categories, there's a website called Decide.com. They're actually now part of eBay. And Decide.com can help you get recommendations on all kinds of stuff like electronics, appliances, home and garden. Uh, they have a new section here for babies and kids. And what it does is this. Let's take a, an example here. You, we see TVs, laptops, tablets. And, and uh, it, it will show you all the highest rated laptops, cameras. Let's take a look at a camera. Like we're going to take a look at this Nikon right here and see why it's rated so high. It's top uh, in its uh, class here. And they tell you the price. You can set a price alert, so if you're looking to get it at a certain price, you can set that up. Um, they're saying it's a good time to buy right now. They say prices are holding steady on it, predicted to hold steady for two weeks. Um, it's one of the highest rated, and no new models are predicted for at least the next five months or so. If you go down a little further here, we see price prediction. This is uh, price history, and we see at one point, it hit a low of $997 in May of this year, and then spite, and it went back up. Um, it does this. They, they've got these graphs for uh, every product, which makes it kind of interesting. The score itself, the users that have it, the experts, how they rate it, uh, how the previous model was rated. Uh, this is rated uh, one of the best at 95. And then you can find some reviews from people and what they had to say about of the camera. So if you're looking to buy something and you know as we get closer to the holidays and you're looking to uh, make some major purchases, maybe gifts, things like that, interesting website to go to. Uh, we see here even phones and video game consoles um, and it's been shown on many different uh, networks and in newspapers. This is the place to go, decide.com to help you decide on some of those major purchases that you want to be making real soon. All right, next one happens to be an app and also as a website. So we're going to show you the website. It's called charitymiles.org. And essentially, you earn money for charity when you walk, run, or bike. And you can get an app for Androids, and you can get an app for uh, your iOS devices. Charitymiles.org is where to go. They have, I was hoping we're going to get to play a little video here um, that tells us all about it. But essentially, <laughs> One chance to play it, I guess. It'll explain here how it works. Um, we see here bikers earn 10 cents a mile, walkers and runners earn 25 cents a mile, up to an initial $1 million sponsorship pool. So, again, if uh, you know you do a lot of exercising and you want to make it count, here's one way to do it. You can get an app, uh, pop it on your on your phone, and it uh, keeps track of where you're running and how much you're running and, and, uh, or biking and then you're, you're earning money and they've got some different charities here that you can also uh, sign up for. So it's not just for one charity, they've got different ones uh, that you can earn money for. So check that out at charitymiles.org. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk about NEPA Blog Con. It's happening in Northeast Pennsylvania in a couple weeks. I think it's October 5th. It's a Saturday. What is it all about? How does it work? Why should you get involved in NEPA BlogCon? That's all coming up next here on ComputerWise. We'll be right back.
When it comes to something as important as your health, it's good to know there is an expert right around the corner with answers to your questions. We have been serving the Northern Lehigh area with the same dedicated service to our community and your health for over 50 years. Daily vitamins are essential to a healthy lifestyle. We offer a full assortment of windmill health products. Bechtel's Pharmacy. Let our family take care of your family. When was the last time you saw a great heavyweight fight? There's one going on in Slatington. Rentschler versus Rentschler. Silverado versus Ram. All month long, Rentschler Chevrolet and Rentschler Dodge will be discounting trucks, offering crazy rebates and giving insane trade-in. Rentschler versus Rentschler. Ram versus Silverado. Don't wait. With these prices, you're the winner. The battle is on. Two great trucks. Two great dealerships. One great name. Rentschler's. When you hear the words locally owned and operated, what does that mean to you? Friendly smiles? Personal service? You'll find that and more at First Northern Bank and Trust. Like no charge telephone banking. Business loan opportunities. Free internet banking. With optional online bill payment. Commercial cash management. Plus service with a smile. 11 convenient locations with old fashioned service. First Northern Bank and Trust, in your community for over 100 years. Member FDIC. We are back here on Computer Wise, George Roberts, along with Michelle Davies and Carla Porter. And, uh, ladies, great to have you on the program. NEPA BlogCon, that's what uh, you guys are doing. Second year in a row for this? or Yeah, this is our second, second year. year. Last yep. year we did it, and again this year. Yep. And it's being held Saturday, October 5th at the Luzerne County Community College in their conference center. Right. Now, uh, this is for anybody, correct? Anybody can take part. Yep, you don't even have to be a blogger or have a social media account. You can just show up if you want to learn about blogging and social media, marketing no yourself, communicating online. Okay, what what exactly is the NEPA blog con? In other words, what what is it? What's it designed for? What will people see? Well, I do. think that it's designed for people of all abilities and skills. Mm -hmm. So like Michelle said, whether you're a person who's a seasoned professional, maybe you work inside of an organization in a marketing department even, mm -hmm. right? Or you're someone who has an interest and you would like to know more, you haven't really uh, branched out on your own yet to mm -hmm. set these accounts up or you've set them up and you're not sure what to do with them, uh, you'll learn okay. at NEPA BlogCon. So it's good for like even small, medium-sized business owners uh, or people that work you know, for businesses, Well, right? it's very interesting that you bring that up because this year we added a track specifically for businesses and this is based on the feedback that we received through feedback surveys from last year's conference. People were there and they wanted a little bit more content about mm -hmm. how to utilize social media and blogging um, and do some digital marketing for the companies that they work for. Mm -hmm. So we added a whole business track this year. Great. Do you find blogging is an essential tool for businesses? I think so. You think so? I, I, think I mean, I, I know like the average person likes to blog, you know, maybe if they're, uh, you know, uh, they, they feel they're, they've got some journalism in them or something like that, but for businesses too. Yeah, I mean, you can create a specific industry related blog, you can um, interact with your customers that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. All right. Why, why should our viewers out there want to attend this? What, what are they going to get out of this? Well, you get, um, you can pick your track. Um, we have three this year, um, and you're going to get a day of learning, things you may sort of know about but want to fine-tune or learn more about, mm -hmm. um, communicating online effectively. Um, you're going to help out the community because 
all of our proceeds from our ticket sales are going back to um, a no-kill shelter in the back mountain. Oh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But right. you mentioned tracks. What 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 are the tracks? Uh, what? Um, you can actually go on our website mm -hmm. and we have our schedule posted here. It'll tell you um, we have marketing, technology, and business. It depends on what you want to learn about. Okay. You pick your track. And um, we'll have a lunch. We actually have a speed networking that we built in this year for everyone to get to know each other. Nice. But depending on what your focus is, where you want to, where you want to improve upon. If mm. you're a small business, obviously, probably the business track would be best for you. Okay. If you're more of a techie, probably the technology side would be more suited for your needs. Marketing is kind of like marketing yourself online with your blog or your social media presence. And th this would be whether you are the individual blogger, maybe you're like you were talking about before, which we would probably call a live stream blogger. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. kind of write about the events and activities of your life, your family, maybe, you know, your hobbies, hobbies sports, right, things like that, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and But you don't want it to just sit there. You want people to read it. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's not one of these things, if you build it, they will come, mm -hmm. right? How would people find it? There are many, many millions of websites out there. Right, right. So uh, you have to know then how to promote your content, mm -hmm. perhaps through other social media. So you have to know how to take your link to the post that you wrote and then perhaps put that on Twitter, or put it on Facebook, maybe embed some YouTube in there and get it out there. Sure. So there are many techniques to use uh, depending on the, the niche and depending on the, the content that you put out there. I guess I would like to say that NEPA BlogCon is a day full of edutainment. Edutainment, mm -hmm. that's good, I like that. I'll tell you what, one of the, the things that has always bugged me about a blog is that it's like writing a book, you know, it's like every day, but every day there's like a new, if I do it daily, there's a new white blank page facing me and I've got to write something. And, uh, and I've always found that to be a challenge, you know, it's like because you're thinking of a lot of things, you know, and Twitter you just, you know, a couple of things and you're done. But when you're thinking of a blog, you want it to be something, be something important, be something that somebody's going to read, you know, take the, if they're going to take the time to go there and read, you want it to be substantial. Right. Not that it has to be wordy, but something substantial. So would this help at all with, with people that, that, you know, are, you know, run into the fact that sometimes I'm, I'm just, you know, stymied sometimes, don't know what to do? Yeah, we actually have Michael Lello. He's, um, he used to be an editor at the uh, Weekender, and okay. he has a blog where he, um, I forget what the name of it is, but it's a music-related blog, and he's going to talk about the ways that the strategies that he uses to come up with fresh content that he can share um, so that people will keep coming, wanting to come back and read the content. Okay. Um, because it's all about consistency and um, finding your niche, like Carla was talking about. Like, if you're going to do music, you want to post about music consistently. You don't want to veer off in the direction of, I don't know, fashion or something. Right, right, right. right, right. right, right. There are lots of ways to manage the content and one of those ways would be through like an editorial calendar. You create a calendar for yourself, whether it's, one would hope we're not using a paper calendar anymore, although they yeah. still exist, right? Yeah. But maybe, <laughs> still. Yeah. maybe your Google Calendar. should be calendar, using an iPad right Google now, I guess, calendar, but I'm still writing Or, down. you know, some online calendar associated yeah. perhaps with the email account, because they typically all have a calendar function, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and actually plot out, you know, what days you want to make a post on. It doesn't have to be every day, but it just needs to be consistent so that your readers learn the frequency and know See, when yeah. to go back, That's right? good information. I would, sure. And know. they also, you know, there are lots of widgets and different ways you can embed things so that people can subscribe to your blog so that when you write a post and you click the publish button, mm -hmm. it auto-generates an email to them saying there's a new post. Wow. And it either can be perhaps an excerpt from your post or it could be the entire post that they'll see in their emails mm -hmm. how you set it up sure. there are many techniques uh, to drive that traffic to your blog and also to manage your content so once you plot out your dates kind of looking at a month perhaps and you plot out the frequency that you want to create content then you can start taking a look at what types of events are going on around those times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what's newsworthy around those times okay. what you're working on and depending again on your niche it's so um it could be anything, depends right? on I mean, that there, right there, it really there are does people right? that are interested in anything i mean if i wanted to write about keyboards right 
the, my fascination with keyboards, I could probably do that, and somebody oh, yeah. out there would want to read it. Right. right. Well, you know, you could just do some research online about keyboards and mm -hmm. what's coming up in the keyboard technology industry, and then you could pick a couple topics and then plot them out and say, well, on you know the first article will be this, and then I'll do that, then I'll do this, then I'll do that, and kind of plot your topics out for the month, and then you have your base to go by what you're going to talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the things that people will leave with? Like, what kind of information or things will they learn that they're going to leave the conference with that they'll take home with them? Besides the very cool t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, besides that very cool t-shirt, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, the, the good thing is everything that we're, we're going to cover in these um, three different tracks, if, for example, there's something going on at a time when you, there's like two or three things you want to see, mm -hmm. all of the videos, we're, we're getting it all recorded so that people can go back later and refer to things that they may have not remembered okay. or seen and wanted to try, but um, so that'll be provided free of charge so anyone can go and see. Okay. Nice. Um, now, everything's available online, all the information. You have a website, uh, nipablogcon.com. Mm -hmm. Right, um, and this is happening Saturday, October fifth. Starts at nine a.m. Yes. Just take us through the uh, schedule, you know, briefly. What what exactly is happening when? Uh, well, we're gonna check everybody in at between nine and nine forty-five a.m. So mm -hmm. there could be some. I mean, once you're checked in and ready to go, um, you can do some networking if okay. you're there early. Um, our sessions start kicking off at 10 a.m. There are 45-minute sessions. We built in like a 15-minute just in case someone runs over or a break, between break, them or break in between, okay. right? We have a lunch. Um, there's four sessions per track, so there's two in the morning and two in the afternoon. Um, lunch is from 12 to 1, and there's a speed networking session that I talked about um, where all of the attendees can get together. We're going to have um, an improv group actually come in called Unorganized Business. They um, are at the Vintage Theater in Scranton, mm -hmm. and they're going to organize some icebreakers and things that were going to be fun, fun surprises. Nice, nice. nice. So. Then you have the afternoon events, yep. that's starting at 2 o'clock. Yeah, more. we'll have two more sessions after that. Okay, and then it ends at 3.45. Is there an after party? Um, <laughs> we, just, I'm sure there'll be many. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. There'll yeah. be many. <laughs> but you know, one of, the, one of the other great things, of course, are our sponsors this year. Okay. We have some wonderful sponsors this year. Uh, we had wonderful sponsors last year, but we're starting to see growth and a lot of interest in, in this event uh, really, taking, oh, yeah, really taking root and nice. in the community mm -hmm. and uh, attracting, uh, attracting some great companies. That's nice. Yeah, well, I, I would imagine that, uh, you know, last year was, was pretty good. I read some of the, uh, some of the testimonials about it um, online, and uh, it really looks like you have it all together. I mean, it's really nicely set up. Looks like it's going to be a fun event. Uh, once again, this is at the Luzerne County Community College Conference Center. Now, anybody who's watching who's not familiar with Luzerne County Community College, where what is that? What road is it on? Where's it out? Um, if you get on 81, um, going south towards Wilkesbury, it's actually about. Well, that, that would mean if you were north, coming south. Sorry. If you're in the you're, Poconos and you're, you're, you're yeah. going over, but you want well, to get to 81. Get, you and basically want to get to 81 and follow it to the Nanticoke exit. And okay. then it's it's really easy to get to off of there. And it's um, you can get to it from Middle Road in Hanover Township and then also from uh, the Sansui Parkway if you're coming the other direction. Okay. Yeah. Right. I would say that if you go out to luzerne.edu, and we have a link yeah. to it on our website as well, there's, there's a, ma a wonderful maps, yeah. wonderful directions. Not difficult at all. Okay, uh, so super. that's that's Just the. Just go and uh, Google and type Luzerne. The community college's community college uh, website. Map and okay. the, whole, the whole thing will come up. Yep. Sure. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about costs and how people can get registered for this conference. Okay. Well, all you have to do is come to our website, okay. nipablogcon.com, which is up on the screen behind us. Mm -hmm. um, you go to buy a ticket. It's really easy. And hooray, they're on sale. So <laughs> just buy a ticket now, and it takes you right to the ticket portal. Nice. Um, the cost is $30, and we're selling T-shirts separately this year as an add-on. Okay. Um, however, we did create a coupon code for ComputerWise, so the viewers uh -huh. actually can get a discount coming in. Um, okay. The discount is 25% off if you use if you come down here and there's the enter discount code. Mm -hmm. um, type in there computer wise, all one word, okay. and hit apply, and it'll take $25 or 25% off of your general admission ticket. 
Very cool. And nice. also we have a nice there's feature a map, this year. There's a map right there. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. a map there. There's a map okay. there. Um, if you, I, what was the, if you donate food or an item. $10 worth of uh, pet supplies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll get a free Or worker. a $10 in cash and you'll have a professional headshot taken for your LinkedIn oh. profile, your yeah. Facebook page, your Twitter avatar, for whatever type of a profile you need. Nice. Uh, from professional photographer Brent Pennington. You know, that's one thing that, you know, a lot of times people t will take pictures with their phones and stuff like that. It just doesn't turn out the same as a professional photographer. Well, you know, and the nice thing is he's not going to give it to you on a Polaroid, right? Because we right. don't do that anymore. <laughs> right. but, Polaroid, but, what's that? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but you will be able to have the digital file, so you'll be oh, able super. to use use it and uh, won't have to worry about how to get it back into your computer. Wow, yeah. nice, nice. And it's also, um, there's a charity involved here, right? You're benefiting the Blue Chip Farm Animal Refuge right. in Dallas, Pennsylvania. Right. It is a no-kill shelter. Mm -hmm. um, so they, and they, it's completely funded through through the community. Um, it's a nonprofit organization, so um, they don't turn any animals away. They they. I mean, they're up to their eyeballs and cats and everything. Yeah, right now, so, everybody. So, is. yeah, I mean, with the economy, maybe some people can't afford it or whatever. And they also the case have free adoptions, free which adoptions, is great. Free adoptions, yeah. Nice. Right. So we're supporting them this year with all of the proceeds from, from the event. Excellent. Excellent. We're going to come back. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk more about NEPA BlogCon and, and also talk about some of the tools that you use to plan this event because this is kind of interesting too so stay tuned we'll be back with more here on computer wise in just a moment getting you back to your active lifestyle. It's state-of-the-art surgical equipment on your side. Quality is knowing you're receiving some of the best care in Pennsylvania. At Blue Mountain Health System, we understand what it takes to make you better. Our hospitals have received quality awards and accolades from numerous organizations for over the past two years. So while we are not the biggest, we just do it better. And that's what quality is all about at Blue Mountain Health System. Naden Hutton and Palmerton Hospitals of Blue Mountain Health System. Just better. I Patriotism, represented by the American flag. Our military men and women pay a very high price to secure our liberties. That's why we offer American and military flags made in the USA. With the opening of our patriotic room, you'll find a place for patriots and veterans to share stories. We'd like to invite everyone to the flag store where we're proud to honor those who serve. For liberty and justice for all. Hi, I'm Patrick Duffy. Are you having trouble hearing? Here's an easy way to find out if it's something as simple as earwax. Call Miracle Ear for a free better hearing kit or to schedule your free hearing and video otoscope test. Miracle Ear has been helping people hear better for more than 60 years. Call for a location near you. 610-824-3500. Come home to the village at Palmerton. There's always something to do, from trips and activities to making new friends. And with large, spacious rooms and an array of amenities, you'll feel right at home. Scenically nestled in the Tri-County area, the village at Palmerton is closer than you think and yet in a league of its own. The village at Palmerton. Assistance when you need it, independence when you don't. Call for a free tour today, 610-824-7406, or visit us online at thevillageatpalmerton.com. Welcome back to Computer Wise, George Roberts, along with Michelle Davies and Carla Porter from NEPA BlogCon as we talk about their big blog conference, which is coming up on Saturday, October 5th. It's being held at the Luzerne County Community College, and it's definitely something that you want to check out and uh, be a part of. If you're into blogging at all or you're interested in getting into blogging or you want to find out how blogging can benefit you or your business or the business you work for, if you're into marketing, uh, those kind of things, definitely something to, uh, to take part in. Now, one of the things we wanted to discuss is some of the tools that are used to help plan your conference. And of course, uh, the top one, I guess, would be Google Docs, because there's a lot going on with Google Docs that you can use. Right. I, 
I think what we should start with, though, is the calendar, because we were just talking about that. Okay. So here, for example, I have, well, I have a couple calendars in here, mm -hmm. but um, my NEPA BlogCon one kind of sorts it out by, okay, we're going to do a post every Wednesday, we're going to send an email blast every Thursday, and then someone's on social media duty for the week, covers. And we have our weekly meetings. Yeah, we have our weekly meetings that wow. go on here. So there's a lot of stuff, but it organizes it for us, and it pops up alerts so we know where we need to be with yeah. certain dates and things like Keeps that. You guys and really it's a, organized. It does, exactly. and it's a shared calendar, so we all have access to it. We all can see the calendar, and we also get reminders in our email. All through Google. We get reminders in our email yeah. when there's yeah, yeah. something on the calendar. Yeah. You know, right. we get an alert, so Fantastic. that works good. I mean, we right. use Google. I'm sure there's other providers such mm -hmm. as like Yahoo and Microsoft that Zoho, have many. Yeah, mm -hmm. similar setups, but this Google makes it really nice. And the same with, with Google is the same everywhere. As long as you sign up with an account, which means you end up with a Gmail mm -hmm. uh, dot com uh, web uh, or uh, email address, but you use that and you, you get in and you're, it, it's you're an integrated suite of tools. Right. right. So it has everything that, for example, Microsoft Office or or Open Office or any mm -hmm. of those programs have. Mm -hmm. So it has your word editor for your documents. It has your spreadsheet wow. program. It has your Slide show like your PowerPoint program. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. has dr drawing and images, mm -hmm. and you can store audio. I mean, so it has every capability. Plus, it integrates with the calendar, with your email, and everything integrates all together. together yeah. Not to mention the fact that when we can't meet in person, how do we meet? We go actually. We use Google Plus, which has Google Hangout built into it now. Okay. So basically, um, Mandy's one of the girls in our group. Mm -hmm. um, like, if we wanted to start a Hangout, we could do it from here. New Hangout. And then just pick whoever we want to be. In. We want it. We want to be in. We all have webcams at home, so we just get on in our pajamas. <laughs> oh, so, so you guys are actually having a meeting, right? Yeah. From the comfort of your home or wherever you're we at. We can all see one another. Yeah. And you can see each and other. Hear one and hear another. each other. Here, yeah. wow. And share documents. We can all look at documents together. We can see anything. Wow. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, I'm surprised more people. Uh, don't talk about this. Yeah. Well, and the, I mean, there's Skype that will do it too, but it, mm -hmm. I don't think Skype has the integrated calendar documents. Right, with and the apps. Google, it's yeah, just so yeah, nice. Yeah. Everything is in one place. Wow. So it's. Can you, can you if, if you were out somewhere and you had it on your phone, can you do it with your phone too? Or? I know the iPad yeah, has an app for it because mm -hmm. I've used that. Um, Android. Android, yeah, because Leslie, Google, Android, 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 Google because and, Google, yeah. and, and it's in Google Apps as Google well. Apps. If you can yeah. have Google Apps on your phone, then you can, okay. you can do it. Yeah. What is this thing called? Uh, window. Window is our ticket portal, um, and it's it's free to sign up. Um, and it's spelled interestingly, W H I N D O. Yeah, and basically, it's a ticket portal. So if you have a nonprofit event, a profit event, whatever kind of event you want to sell tickets for online, wow. this is a ticket portal, and it's free to sign up. I mean, you have to pay the fees for if you're charging credit card processing fees, right? right. Those, but those type of things. They process it, they, but they then, do it all. So it's very seamless. And then seamless. there's an account that'll put it. In it for puts you it in a PayPal right. account. PayPal account. The okay. other thing is, if you have an event that you're not charging for. Mm -hmm but maybe you have limited seats available, so you need to manage a sure. per ticket registration. Right, right. If there's no cost to attend your event, there's no cost to use this website at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is really nice. Yeah. yeah. Wow, very cool, the win window, ticket window to your event. And it's completely customizable. You noticed before when Michelle was showing the where to purchase tickets, it looked like our website. It sure did. That's because our team member, Leslie, who does our design, mm -hmm. she skinned it to look just like our website. Okay. Yeah, and so it, you can't tell you that you're not even on our website. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's pretty good. What about some of these other things? Uh, tweet chat, live wall, social wally? Um, these are different things that we are trying to figure out which one is the best route to go. But okay. basically, what we want to do is, like, you have the, the screen behind us. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, what we want to do is on our presentate or on our white screens behind the speakers is have... Um, a designated hashtag, which you know is a searchable text block of text on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to have NEPA BlogCon it's for our hashtag. It's like the running yeah. conversation, and you get to see mm -hmm. what everyone is saying about the event, even people that aren't there. That maybe you're like, wow, I really wish I went to hashtag NEPA BlogCon, right. and it'll pop up behind the the speaker as he's presenting it. I mean, as long as he doesn't have a 
That's it's your social basically it's, it's your social media feeds okay. yeah about a specific thing okay. so rather than have that very broad conversation that global conversation about what people are eating and what people are doing and mm. what people are working on you the hashtag is an identifier mm -hmm. it's like a keyword mm -hmm. and then you only get that in your conversation yeah, so, so it's only going to pull up social media that. right feeds uh, and it could be even feeds from Facebook it could be feeds from an, any type of a social media account that only have to do with that keyword okay. mm -hmm. I see you also use uh, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Vine. Uh, that's a lot. You're on the wall. <laughs> How do you keep that all organized? Well, that's why we have the social media calendar because we, okay. we, like, um, who's Everybody week has is a it? job to do, right? Yeah, it's my week. Okay. It's your week. So you're managing all of that fun stuff. <laughs> and so you will then put something that will appear on each of these? Not, or maybe not, not every not single everyone. day okay. and not every single week, but. We, we definitely want, well. yeah, we want to definitely promote our blog posts that we're doing every Wednesday through mm -hmm. some of these means. It might not work for every single one, but. Now, now Vine is short videos, right? Right. You we're actually, yeah, we were actually <laughs> running a contest yesterday. Uh -huh. um, the first three people that sent us their funniest twerk videos. Twerk. Because right. it, it was triple twerking Tuesday. Oh, it was. Yes. <laughs> three twerking videos, triple twerking Tuesday. Triple twerking One, Tuesday. you know, got to get tickets out to our event. So uh -huh. if someone did a short Vine and sent, put, posted the link, we would have given them a free ticket, which nobody still entered, so. Oh, they could still do it? They could still do it. Wow. Let's go, <laughs> folks. Get your twerking videos get in. Get your twerk on. <laughs> yeah, get your wow. twerk on. Wow. Can you, uh, and they can access that through your website, Neva BlogCon. I mean, where to submit it or how We have a they... blog post about it. Yeah, we have you a blog do. post okay. about it, but basically we were asking people to go to our Facebook page Facebook. And, okay. and post it on here. Okay. See, here's, you could see the the uh, information here on how to how to do it how to do it all right how you <laughs> send that in all right wow you guys are really organized wordpress of course uh, goes without saying You're, you use that for your blogs and it's our platform our site platform. is wordpress yep. based okay. mm -hmm. yeah i mean wordpress isn't necessarily just a blog i mean you can make a whole website out of it and um where is it here over here on the end. Oh, ah, yeah, okay. On the end. That this is <clears throat> this is all That's platformed on WordPress. Right. I mean, we have a blog within it, mm -hmm. but these are all page static pages. So I mean, wow. It's like very, a website. Yeah, it's basically mm -hmm. like a website. You wouldn't even wow. know it's a blog coming. So here. WordPress is really just the content management system. Yeah. Right. All right. We are running out of time, but we want to again tell our viewers about NEPA BlogCon, blogging conference coming to Northeast Pennsylvania on Saturday, October 5th. Mm -hmm. And registration, or I guess organization, starts at 9 in the morning because you want them to register ahead of time. And to do that, how do they? How do our viewers register for this? Um, well, first you want to go and buy a ticket on our website. Okay, so, we, so we have your information, yep. And you can use the coupon code that we gave you earlier. All right. And just go ahead and purchase the ticket, show right. up on the day of the event, and we'll register you in for the day of fun. Nice. And the coupon code is computerwise, one word. That'll give you 25% off. Yep, 25%. And George, you're invited. So. Yeah. We'd like you Super. to be our special guest. Yes. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. It sounds like a lot of fun. That's at the Luzerne County Community College Conference Center. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are directions on the website of how to get there. Not hard to get to from anywhere in Northeast Pennsylvania. You want to go out there and have a lot of fun on Saturday, October 5th. Mm -hmm. For NEPA BlogCon. Ladies, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank Michelle you for Davies, having us. Carla Porter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on ComputerWise. Communications has you covered with live football on TV 13.